up, y'all? Now that we have our cabinet of curiosities, I think it would be pretty easy to put together a witch room. And a hidden doll room so we can keep all of our magic stuff in one place. For this project, I'm using Elmer's foam board that I bought at Target. It was about $3. I think we're gonna need two pieces. To cut the foam board, I use an acrylic ruler and a sharp X-Acto knife. My foam board measures 20 by 28 inches. However, if you do not wish to use foam board, you can always use cardboard. But before we get started, it's time to say goodbye to a dear old friend. The Mystery Shack. Sorry folks, but we're harvesting it for parts. Plus, I need the space. And I want to make a charmed inspired room so these stained glass windows could totally come in handy. We just have to figure out how to get them out. I'm thinking just using my X-Acto knife to cut around the uh, window is a plan. Boy, I really glued this stuff on there. All right, now we should just be able to take it out, right? Ugh. Yay! We did it! One more to go. That should do it. Let's take these columns as well. They might come in handy while building the attic. Hmm, this could possibly be useful. It's a little pipe that was on the top of the house. Aw, Dipper's painting. I'm totally gonna keep that. This house is so dark, you can barely see in it. But there's a little owl charm and clock. Yeah, we're gonna use this. And we might be able to harvest this wall here. Now that we have our windows, we can start to plan our room. The lines on my stained glass windows are a little thick, but I think they will still do the job. Mombi Plays Barbie on Instagram has amazing stained glass windows, so might have to check out the old Etsy shop one day. I'm gonna use my ruler to trim off these lines a little neater. That's better. We are gonna place these side by side. So let's measure across to see how wide we need the back wall to be. At the very least, it's eight and a half inches. So I think we should just go ahead and make it nine and a half to give ourselves a little wiggle room. Let's take the foam board, measure up 13 inches, make a mark so we can draw a line going all the way down the foam board. Cut on the line drawn to get a 13 by 28 inch piece. I actually think nine and a half inches is just a little too wide, so maybe we can just put the windows closer together. If we don't put any space between them, it's actually eight and a quarter inches, so that's better. But it's going to make it a little weird to make the sides even, so we need to go with at least a quarter inch in the middle, so we're at eight and a half inches. 28 minus eight and a half is 19 and a half, and that divided by two is nine and three quarters. So I measure over nine and three quarters from the edge, score it, being careful not to cut all the way through so it can bend, repeat on the other side to make a trifold. Now let's lay it down so the cut sides are facing down. Let's draw a line in those corners so we can see them. Measure over two inches from the line and score it. Repeat on the other side so when we stand it up, we now have a little recess. But we did lose some length on our side walls. So let's take the leftover foam board, cut two 13 by three inch strips, glue one onto each side giving us a pretty large space. Place the windows in the center. Duh, why didn't I just turn them the other way? That's better. 
Sometimes you just need a good night's rest and you see things completely different in the morning. Let's glue the windows together to make one large window. Cover the walls with scrapbook paper. When my paper isn't long enough and I have to use more than one piece, I like to glue the bottom piece on first. So when I overlap the other piece, that cut edge is kind of pointing down. For me, it just helps it to be a little less noticeable. And when I'm doing bricks or something with like lines, let's try to match up those grout lines. So it kind of just blends in a little better. We do have this little cut seam here that we need to bend. So when I'm gluing the paper, I fold it, then glue the paper over the edge, pressing firmly and making sure it's a really tight fit. Then slowly start to open it back up, but making sure to push the paper into that crease. So when our wall bends, it's still covered. For my walls, I went with a dark brick and a dark wood. Take the window, trace it onto the back wall, cut on the line drawn. Now, because we put this window in the center of our room, it is going to change the way it looks on the shelf. I like my hidden doll rooms to be pretty uniform over there on the shelves. But since we are making a charmed inspired room, the stained glass window kind of needs to be in the back. Glue it into place. If you are careful with your measurements, it should fit just right. All right, it's pretty flush. That's cool. I glue it on the back to secure it. And now we have our window. Hopefully when we shine light through it, we'll get a nice glow in our photos. Now we need to add a floor. The back wall measures a hair less than eight and a half inches. When the side wall is straight, we're looking at about 13 inches. So I take a second piece of foam board, measure and cut to those measurements, make sure it fits, cut two more pieces that are 11 by 10 and three quarters, I did have to piece one of the boards because there wasn't quite enough to go all the way across to be floor extensions for the side walls. Cover with paper, making sure the direction of the planks is different than what is on the walls. Glue in the center floor, glue the small side walls to the floor, helping the walls to keep their shape. Add the floor extensions on the sides, and we have a pretty large folding doll room. All we need to do is pick up the side floors, place them in the center, then fold in the side walls to make a room that is easy to store. That also means that all of the accessories need to be able to fit in this space. Let's take those pillars we cut out of the mystery shack, cut them at an angle, glue them onto the back wall in the corners, to give the illusion of rafters. Let's add two more beams onto the wood wall. I added my last full one across the top because they were a little short. I have one more little piece. I cut a small piece and add it to the corner. I added another one on the other side. This is definitely starting to feel like an attic to me. Those beams are helping to hold the floor down, which is adding a little security or stability to our space. And now let's decorate. I wanna use the headboard from our 3D pin video. This feels very appropriate, but it is kind of floppy. So I'm going to glue it to the wall, which means it's now a permanent structure in this room, which I am happy about because it is kind of delicate. The bed that we have to go with it is white, which I feel is a little bright for this space. Yeah, it totally changes the whole feel of this room. So let's remove the bedding, glue on something a little darker. I'm going with this kind of a rich red, almost like a burgundy. Then let's cover the bottom with a folded over piece of black fabric tucking it underneath and gluing it down. 
Place it in front of the headboard. Add some bedding. I'm kind of limited on dark fabrics, so this is gonna have to work. It is a little bright. So let's lay a piece of black lace across it to tone it down a little. And a little piece of velvet. I love my throws. All the little folds add to the texture. I salvaged this charm from the mystery shack and we're gonna glue them above the bed. Fancy. We have been having a blast making mini books for the last few weeks. This is our newest one. They are all available for free on our blog to download and print. You just go to myfroggystuff.blogspot.com, click on the top tab that says printables, choose this one. Scroll down to the album that says books and stuff. I think it says books and school stuff. Click on it and then it'll open in a new window. Click on the picture that you want. There are three little dots in the top corner. You click on that to download and print according to your printer settings. Then cut it out. Glue the template onto recycled paperboard. Cut it out. Take the cover and fold on the lines. Once you have all of those creases, let's take the template and glue them between the folds, leaving a little bit of space between them. Fold over the tabs and glue them down to make the cover. Now we're gonna take the pages and fold them accordion style. I actually like to fold them all where I can see the line first. Glue the last page to the first page of the next row. Use glue on the back between the pages to glue them together to make the pages double-sided. There should be two single pages left on the ends and I made these a little longer than the others. If it's longer than what is needed to fit inside the cover, give them a little trim. Glue them to the inside of the cover to make the mini book. This book does have pictures inside. Most of the other ones have been blank, so you can add your own details. Think of it as a mini journal. And I do wanna apologize for saying the Book of Shadows wasn't a real book. I didn't know. Add the book to our cabinet of curiosities, then add the cabinet to the room. Add the trunk from a previous video under the window, along with a painting of Mother Gothel from a frog vlog and our broom from YouTube Live. Let's add a rug. This is a mouse pad from one of our Amazon hauls. Rugs are great for covering those seams in the floor. The last thing we need is a little podium or lectern. Cut circles out of paperboard. I just traced a few bottle caps. Make a hole in the center that's large enough to fit a wooden dowel. Cut a wooden dowel to about six and a half inches. Glue it into the circles. Cut a rectangle. I'm using the little insert that comes with fabric. If you're using a cereal box, you're gonna want a few layers. Cut a smaller piece and glue it to the bottom. Cut one more small circle. Make a hole in the center. Glue it onto the other end of the wooden dowel at an angle, then glue the rectangle on top to make a little stand. Paint it. I'm just going with a nice, simple black. Place it in the center of the room for our books. I really wanted to place this book on it because it has that pop-out feature, but that angle is just weird. So we can just go with our new book, The Weird and Unexplained, because it does have some pictures in it. Completing our attic room, which I think is kind of perfect for our character, V Hunter from Summer and Callie. Well, well, now that I have a place, looks like I'm gonna stay in town for a while. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for another room build. Like, comment, Share and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at My Froggy Stuff and The Frog Vlog. And we will see you next time. Bye!